good. So what we want to do now is um, start up the SketchUp program. If you look down at your dock, and if you've not been using a Mac, that's totally cool. It, it's really basically the exact same on a PC as it is on a Mac, so that's good. If you're a PC user, it shouldn't be much of a problem with the crossover at all. Um, there's a red, it's basically a square, it's not a square, but cube type icon on your dock, which is of course this row of all these app icons at the bottom of your screen. Just go ahead and click that once. Okay, it'll bounce a few times. And it should open everyone up a kind of like a introductory window um, here. And um, this is basically just our opportunity to basically tell it what unit of measurement we want. That's the one thing. And then the other thing is uh, it's going to try to sell us the full version. Another thing. Um, and it's going to try to get us to download the new one, which we're not going to do today because they make a new one every year. You don't need to get the new one every year unless you really want to. Um, I don't do it personally because I have purchased extra stuff that I've already got synced up with the 2015 edition. So I just use the 2015 edition. There is a little catch that they throw in there to make, just because they have to make it difficult. They have to try to make you buy it. You know, you, I mean, I don't blame them. In fact, you get a whole lot of nice stuff for free. Um, there's not a whole lot that they've paywalled that you absolutely are going to need. Um, and there's workarounds. So anyhow, um, for you guys, really the only thing that you guys really need to look at here before we go ahead and say, hey, yeah, go on, go ahead. Um, let's get to it. Is this template category? down here, portion, whatever it is. Uh, we're gonna use this one here, simple template feed in inches, but you guys already clicked it, didn't you? I knew it. I heard clicking, I knew it. But don't click it. I'm glad we're not going through a minefield or something here. It's like minefield class. Laser cutting. Now, this button right here, you know. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. These here though, if you do wanna do something different, um, it's a pain in the rear to try to switch this in the middle of things. I mean, it, I think you can do it, but I don't even know how without looking it up. Sorry about that. I think you can do it. But if you want it in metric, this is where you want to tell it. Hey, start in metric. But So basically, these first two are great. Um, notice that down here there is one for a MakerBot, I want to say, printer. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about printing and stuff in a Bit. So let's just go ahead and you can either click start or no, yeah, I guess you do have to click start. You can't double click. Okay. Um, again, I'm Stevie. I love SketchUp. I may go on the fast side. I'm not going to go on the slow side. If I'm going to lean to either side, I'll go too fast. So if I go too fast, I want you guys to do something. I want you to stop me, slow me down tell me to repeat or go back over or whatever it needs to do because we've got plenty of time, time's on our side. We will probably get out early. We'll probably get done before eight. So I'm yours till eight. So ask away, have me repeat away. I can't read your mind. I'm not gonna know that I went too fast. I'll probably keep on going. Not probably, I will keep on going. I need you guys to stop me if I go too quick. Okay, is that cool everybody? All right. Because I can't see your screens, I don't know, you know. A lot of times people are like, hey, can you go back to whatever you did five minutes ago? And it, you know, it builds on what we're doing now. So not only did that, you guys get it. I don't need to keep harping on this. So just if I go too fast, tell me, please. Because I don't like to. So remind me later, obviously, if you get this. Um, make a new one every year. They don't really add a ton to it every year. I mean, over the years, stuff gets added, but for the most part, what I've seen on 2016 was about exactly the same as it was the year before, and I'm guessing 2017's probably not got a whole lot going on either. It's any different. Now, um, just 
just a little info about the the full version versus the freebie. The freebie is always free, forever. And you can use it and use it and use it and use it. Somewhere in the fine print it says if you're actually like practicing architect or engineer or something, you're supposed to get the, the full version. But, you know, I don't know. That's between a lawyer and your, your, your accountant. I don't know. Um, it's a little, it's like four or $500. Um, and there's only a couple of differences. The, there's, a, there's a tool set that you get. There's a sort of a, a long cut workaround you can do in the free version for some of it. And uh, so there's a few tools that you get. And then there's also a lot more options when it comes to exporting. So exporting is just saving it for different applications, different programs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, out of the, you know, the freebie version, you get very limited. Um, the full version, you get a lot more options. Again, there's workarounds, there's stuff you can buy, etc. If you're curious about it, ask me. I'm going to go ahead and have us start modeling. All right. Does everybody's screen look like mine? For the most part. If you've got extra stuff, that's fine. If you're missing this bar here, this large tool set, that is not fine. I need you guys to have that out, and sometimes it isn't. So is it there for everybody? I always take silence as a yes, by the way. I put it on there. Yeah. Okay, good, yeah. You want the large tool set. Um, the other stuff we will bring out as we need it. Um, although, now that I think about it, if you go up to Window and bring out one called Instructor, um, it doesn't really talk, so I'm not, like, scared it's going to upstage me or, you know, steal me away from you guys, but still you guys away from me. But it is kind of nice. It'll tell you what the tool does. Also, my favorite thing about it is the modifier keys because that's hard to know if you don't learn about it. You know what I mean? So that's sort of like holding down shift while you use the tool and stuff like that. Kind of tells you what those do. Okay. So something we need to learn right off the bat right off the bat it's navigation so really quickly we're going to use our first tool together okay and then we are going to practice navigation because if you can't do that you can't do anything in this program i mean it's pointless so we're going to use the rectangle tool really quick i'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because we'll go back and we will um elaborate on it some more. The rectangle tool, if you get your large tool set up, which you should, it should be the left column, fourth tool down. Looks just like a little rectangle. Cardboard box, really, is what I think. You want to draw your rectangle on the ground plane. The ground plane is going to be the green and red axes, not the blue axes. You should be able to do this from your current viewpoint. I'm going to show you how to change your viewpoint in a second, but here's what we want. We want that. We're making a house. So this is your floor plan. This is your start here on the house. And we're going to do something else to it before we start flying around it. We're going to extrude it. And there's a really cool tool that does extrusions called the push-pull tool. We undo something. Uh, Command Z. Is there a good way to reset it back to the original thing? Because even my view is weird. Oh, uh, well, I'm going to get to the view stuff. Well, I think I got it. I got it. But yes, right. if you go up to, you ready? Camera, mm -hmm. standard views, this will give you um, okay, got it. You know, a lost. way to get home if you get crazy lost. Because you can get crazy lost. You can go anywhere in this 3D space. Like you could, Is this ISO? It is not. What, what is, uh, it can be. No, no. What, what is the standard view right that we have right now? Perspective is what you should be on. Perspective. But you can get ISO. That That's parallel projection. Um, okay. Sure. And they do have very different look, obviously. So you enlarge the rectangle. You want to make it larger? Yeah. Uh, that'd be the scale tool. So it's this one right here. So if you click, if you select uh, anything and then you 
can click and drag on that. What I want to do to it though is push pull. So actually, well, it didn't. It doesn't. I I know a different way to change the scale of it if you want. Um, what you want to do is take this push pull tool, which is this guy right here. Seventh tool down on the right column. Drag that up like this. Okay. Just click and drag on the top, and you should have yeah. not a perfect cube, but a cubic shape. Everyone got that? Yeah. Everybody get cubic? All right, take that as a yes. All right, now something, you, something else you could do, um, we'll get to the scale tool here in a second, but you can do oh, this. Can you can move every side, yep. Mm -hmm. Pretty awesome, right? Um, so you can adjust your cube, but here's the important thing, okay? Before we do anything else, guys, really got to lay down some ground rules, which is navigation, super important, right? Because you can't see what you're working on, what's the point, right? So here's the cool thing, though. You want to use a three-button mouse for this. That's probably why there's not an iPad version. Well, I don't know if that's the truth, but there aren't really, there are some cool modeling programs for tablets and devices, but not SketchUp. Uh, you want a three button mouse. Um, I'm sure there's a way to use the trackpad, but I don't even, I don't even care. Cause like, why would you try? Um, so the three button mouse is going to be the beauty of our user interface. We will be able to navigate around using the mouse as well as all the other tools at the same time. Now, there are tools for all this stuff I'm getting ready to show you, okay? Don't need to use them though, but they are down here, right? We're gonna learn orbit, zoom, and shit and pan, okay? So the first one's very easy. They all involve the middle button, your scrolly wheel on your mouse. Easy first one, roll that back and forth, nice and easy. There you go, back and forth, back and forth. Right, everybody get the zoom down? That's pretty easy, right? Next best one, I don't know about that. A good one is orbit. Hold down that middle button, press it down, press the wheel down and move your mouse at the same time. Ooh, ah, fun, right? You might have trouble with that. Get used to it. You're gonna be doing this all day long. Now, this is not the same as rotate the camera. This is orbit the camera. This is like if the camera was on a track or something. This camera is moving around the object. You know, I assume that I had a square and I have a, like a trapezoid here. Hmm. Did you move? Hmm. Did you move a uh, one of the edges, perhaps? You would have had to use a few tools we haven't gotten to yet to do this. Is that what you've got? I don't know. I just uh, used the tool you suggested. So. Uh, it's quite interesting here. Hmm. Take a look. Oh, you're using, you're using that scale tool. Mm -hmm. uh, so kind of skewed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you in parallel projection right now? Okay, you look like you might be. Go to uh, view, I wanna say. Or camera, sorry. Now you're in perspective. Oh, interesting. Well, you can undo it if you want, or you can keep it that way. It doesn't, it's not gonna hurt anything. Let's just go like this. See where I am. There you go. Yeah, you might have just been moving that one side. That's what you were doing. Yeah. So scale, we'll get to that. That's so that when you were scaling, you were only affecting one of the faces, which kind of changed the dynamic of the shape a little bit. Um, you can scale the whole shape. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, I got to show you one more navigation tool first, though. Got to crawl first, guys. I know it's not exactly the most fun thing, but we'll get there. I promise we'll get there. You can make really awesome stuff in here. Okay, you ready? So you got orbit, you got zoom. Okay, something's gonna happen so to the you. Zoom is yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, they're all kind of rolled in the same button, really. 
Now you're going to encounter a situation where you're really going to need to edit this corner down here or something, right? And zooming ain't getting you there, nor is, I don't want to be down here like this. I want to be looking at it from up top. You have to use a pan function, which is what I just did. But here's the magic, okay? Yeah, there's a tool for it, but get that other hand up there on the keyboard, and while you're orbiting, also add to it the shift button. And you should be sliding all around. That pan is its more useful than you might think at first. You can't get everything with just the orbit and the uh, zoom. Useful. Yeah, you'll need the pan. It, it's, it's very helpful to kind of help put stuff right in the middle where you need it. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the, the most important tool that's on here, because I don't really count those as tools. Those are sort of part of navigating the space. I mean, they do count as tools, but... The select tool, imagine that, right? Let's talk a little bit about the select tool, because it does a lot for just one tool. Very busy little tool. Um, obviously, it picks what you're going to be affecting, what you're manipulating, what you've chosen, however you want to look at it. It's the highlighter. Okay, anything that you've selected and everything that you've selected will show in the form of a highlight. Um, it'll either be like a dotted grid, kind of like, a, I don't know, half tone almost, or a um, highlighted blue line. And this brings me to the different materials that make up the world of SketchUp. Everything inside SketchUp is either one of two things. It's either a face or an edge. There are no points. I mean, there are, but there's not. <laughs> they, don't, they don't look at them that way. They're there, actually, but they're not selectable. You can change them and move them and alter them, as we'll see, but really everything is either a face or a edge. Now, I'm just going to do a little demo here. I want you guys to do this. Grab your rectangle tool. Again, we'll go back and let's make us some doors and, and windows. I want you to notice how the tool um, is really good about um, staying on the same face. So if you're already working on a face, it'll draw it right on that face. I need to make my box bigger. Okay. How do I do that? Well, a couple ways. Um, mm. Just stretch it out. Uh, you could. I, I would do this. I, okay. Triple click. Now a double click will connect both the faces and the edges that you're... Um, okay, connected to. If you triple click, you'll select everything that's touching what you just triple clicked. Then you want to go to scale tool in your case. Okay. And then dra just drag your corner. You don't have to actually hold any modifiers. If you drag it by the corner, it will keep it proportional. And then you don't have to hit enter or anything. You just can kind of click on something else, somewhere else, if you wish. And the rectangle tools work good for the windows. But if you want a circular window, there is a circle tool. You can use it if you're feeling a little adventurous. Okay. Is there dimensions? There are. There are. Um, there's a couple ways to actually use dimensions. So if you're used to a CAD program, 
and I'm not, uh, the ones that I've used are much better in this department. Um, I'm not sure why SketchUp doesn't do as much in that vein. But that's a very good question. So if you look down in the lower right, very lower right corner, there's a little Wait, measurements see. box, yeah. Now you start clicking on stuff, um, actually not giving me that. There is a tape measure tool, okay, that will give you the measurements. And when you're actually drawing something, so let's say I want to draw a window back here with the rectangle tool. Okay, if I, if I draw that, um, like that, and then if I go down, so I have to complete the shape, but then I can go back there and I can make adjustments and I can say, no, I just want eight feet, none of the extra, by eight feet, none of the extra. Okay, and then I hit enter, it makes it that size. I don't know if you saw, that was, oh. Can you get off that uh, instructor off there so it's yeah. a bit distracting you? So now I made it eight by eight. Okay. So it's a little clunky. You have to go ahead and commit to your shape first. Okay, but then as long as these numbers are up here, I can go in and I can say, no, no, no. About 10 feet by 13 feet, or 10 feet by 10 feet, if I want, not inches, feet. Of course, your feet and the inches are the old fashioned apostrophe and you, you should be able to tap it in there, right? Yep. Well, it doesn't type in. So what you want to do, it, it's a little clunky. I'll start at the very beginning here. So, got my rectangle. Go ahead, draw my rectangle. Um, now, look in the lower right as you're drawing, before you let go of the mouse, you can get it kind of close to what you want. You don't have to get it exactly, but you can get it near. And then, so say I want to go ahead and let go. Okay. Once you let go, don't click anywhere else with the mouse because you'll go too far if you do that. You need to go down and that's where you'll put in your values right after you do your first click. You reset. Resize? Yeah, resize window. Oh, which window? No. Oh, this window, not like as in this window. window. Okay, no, sorry. No. Um, uh, or whatever, a, uh, a square that we're using as a window, a rectangle that we're using as a window. It would be the scale tool again. Okay. Sure. If you didn't want to put in manuals, oh, yeah. I see here. Uh, does the measurements come up on that? No, measurements only come up when you. Um, basically ask for them. So you've got both uh, the tape measure. I'll just go ahead and show you the tape measure. It's this guy down here. It's actually the one right under the scale tool, right? And so it's pretty darn easy. Point to point, it tells you down here. The dimensions tool, which is next to it, might be a little more handy for you. When you use it, you actually create a, a label. That, li duplicate, that lives. Uh, yeah. Can you duplicate a shape? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can duplicate anything in here. So, what's the command for that? For duplicate, that's just copy and paste. So, so that would be Command C? Mm hmm. Yep. Just select what you want to copy Command C, Command V. You will paste it. Um, yeah. Copy, I guess. Command oh, Command V should be paste. V. Victor, uh-huh. Yeah, it didn't, didn't paste. Well, it, you have to click again. You have to, you have to click again for it to paste. Right. Sorry. It, it, it kind of like hangs out until you tell it where to go, and then it'll paste in. So basically, you've got power over placement um, in the beginning there. That's, that's really odd, because the first window I, I made was three foot one direction wide and two foot six inches the vertical and then 
I made a co copied and pasted one. It looked a little different. This is length one half inch. A half inch? Yeah. Then that would be really small. Well, but it doesn't look that much smaller. Hmm. I don't it's know. It's actually the exact same size. Okay. Interesting. Well, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, whatever. Do um, you have an alignment tool on this? Uh, kind of. Um, no, it's not. Probably getting ahead of you. Yeah, it, that, that might be something that you would uh, add to this. So there's a lot of really good, um, there's a lot of excellent um, add-ons to this program. Plugins, we like to call them. So there's no extensions. So well, like, it's not like Visio or something or AutoCAD. I don't know those. Um, I mean, I used AutoCAD in like 1998 in high school. So you can't say select one ob two two objects and say align top, align bottom, uh, center. Yeah, there's a line tool somewhere. Kind of. I mean, I I use different ways, but uh, oh. that's a pretty common one. Most get programs see. have alignment. If not, let's it does do ahead. kind of. It'll do like an auto align. Um, hmm, like. And you can also align through any of the axes just with simply clicking the um, up, down, left, or right arrow keys. But as you can see, and we'll, we'll go over a lot of this when we use the move tool and we copy and paste, it, it automatically aligns. So it, I, I've never. Too. Yeah, the snaps so are there snap unless you turn them off. So they work, they work pretty good. Um, but as far as like an align, like all align center or anything like that, I have to look into that. I bet there's a plug-in for it, but I've not encountered it in the uh, out of the box tools before. Are there any questions at all on the rectangle or the circle tools? Something I want you to notice as well about the circle tool is there's no true curved lines uh, inside SketchUp or really most stuff in a computer. <laughs> it's not really a circle, but it, it will be a circle. It would print as a circle. It would, uh, if you were printing schematics, they would come out as a circle. Um, well, mostly. Any questions about circle or either the circle or the rectangle tool? No? Polygon tool? Sitting right there next to it. You can put in how many sides you want down there. So if I want a triangle, uh, I can do that. I can tell it to be a triangle. Three ten. And now it will be a triangle. Which is the polygon. Okay. It's right next to the circle. Yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, something else I want to talk about before we go on. Click on her, your little friend down there. Notice how she completely she kind of completely selects. But that's because she's a group. So she's actually all those little pieces inside combined so into one. Group group. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'll show you guys how to do that. Um, so that's one way of selecting multiple things at the same time. Um, when they're ungrouped, you just pick them apart one by one. Now, something I wanted to talk about real quick, especially as we get into the line tool. The, the line tool, which is a drawing tool, um, I really like it a lot. I love it. Um, it is basically a connect the dots tool. It's this one right here, the pencil, okay? It's a good example where you can see that, check it out. See what I got going on there? See those lines? See those lines? Now you see them, right? Notice how there's no face here. 
there can be a face. I right, see that. But what what happens when I delete this? <gasps> it's gone. Can't exist. Face can't exist without edges around it. Okay. I want you to think like a almost like a film that you blow with bubbles. Needs a frame around it. Can't exist without a frame. Typically, you don't want it to. It won't live for long. So, bear that in mind. Okay. You can have edges all over the place with no face. You can't have a face without edges. Now that you've got this line tool out, is everybody trying that out with the pencil? We're going to use it to make a roof. But if you want to add stuff to just kind of practice, just add some stuff to the side, be my guest, make yourself a couple little shapes. It's a point-to-point -point tool. It's going to find the point. It's going to snap to it. It'll snap to end, end points, it'll snap to midpoints. That's what we want to use it for. It's a good mid, midpoint finding tool. So let's make a straight line from midpoint to midpoint. It's going to snap to your axes. If you remember, your axes are color coded RGB. I want you to do that on top, make a cross. Shouldn't be too hard. Just a little bit of math. We can make two different types of roofs here. Um, we're going to make just a, you know, kind of a simple pyramidal roof here first. I want you to find the midpoint down there, right? On the bottom there, up down left and right. And I need you to, this is going to be the fun part, guys. We're going to make like a tent pole coming up the middle, okay? You look at my screen real quick for a second, guys. Some of you aren't looking. By looking up at the front? You sure? Um, you want to get your viewpoint kind of horizontal like this. So you can do this. Now, there's another way to do that. If you really want it to go up and down and not side to side, you need to hit the up arrow on your keyboard. Okay? But once you got this point up here, I want you to connect it to the corners. Then I want you to do this. Now, if you get pieces, if you get extra pieces out like that or something, it's okay. I'll show you how to get rid of those. I want to show you guys how to delete stuff. Mm. To delete things, I want to take your select tool, and I want you to click on the stuff you want to delete. You will highlight it. Then you simply hit the delete button on your keyboard, which is the same as the backspace key, and you will get rid of it. Or, if I want them to have a different kind of roof, if you drag a box around stuff, you will select everything that is in that box. So a quickish way for me to delete this whole roof and start over again is this. That was that fast. You guys can keep your roof, but I'm just showing you an alternative way to make a roof. Is I could do that, and then I could select that middle crossbar, and then I could use the move tool, and I could go straight up, and now I got that kind of roof. That's using the move tool, which I'm going to show you guys in just a minute. I promise. That's that rotating looking thing? No. Uh, next to it. It's this one right oh, here, yeah. the cross. I used it already. Yeah. So if I just moved this corner, I would do really cool modern art stuff to my house. Check that out, guys. Ooh. So, you know, double-edged sword, like, like everything in here. Okay. So, let me just do another delete example. I'm only using one tool here, the select tool. Click and drag a box around this triangle. Say I don't want it anymore. Hit the backspace. That's gone. Okay. That's how you get rid of stuff. 
It's the mobster's favorite tool. So you get rid of them, you make them disappear. You got anybody got any questions? Anything I should show again or do again? How do you uh, do you can you do a, a segment? Like how do you make a hole through something? Um, hole all the way through, let's say a round circle or whatever, right through the middle of that building. Oh, well you a couple of ways you can delete a face. Is that kind of what you were thinking? Delete a face? Okay, well that's one way. Uh, I can make it glass. How did you would just delete it then? I just deleted it. What do you know? Deleted wow, my window. That is that's interesting. Is I mean it could even go you could even take the push pull tool and do something like that. Oh wow, that, that is that is bizarre. So now I've got a little bit of a cylinder going on as well. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, so now we took the push pull tool and any clicked on that. Yeah. Any flat face you can push pull. Anytime. Okay, let me find that. Any direction. Like that. Interpol. Yeah, it's kind of a bizarre tool. How do you get the circle to delete? Just click on it and get delete. Yep. But I can't get that push pull to come out like you did. Um wha what's it doing? Nothing. Nothing? Can you try it on a different face? Does it work on a different face? I've got the circle there that I deleted. So I deleted the circle so I can't, so there's no walls to it. That's probably what it is. Uh, you got to have a face to use push pull. That's what it yeah. is. You, you want to see dots or you're not going to be pushing or pulling okay, much. Gotcha. Yeah. So if you got a situation like this, there ain't a whole lot you can do right. here, except if it's flat, you can recreate it by putting a line there. And then you can actually delete the line and it's still one face. So it, it's kind of funny, but just to give you a quick demo, um, so let me reverse that, okay. Um, anything on a face doesn't really matter what's going on inside it. What's important is, see how it's on that same plane? Everybody see that? Um, same with your draw tool, your, your line tool. Okay, those are all contiguous pieces. Right, where you get into trouble is when you start getting this kind of stuff. It's kind of up a little bit, maybe. It's not quite on that plane, right? Even if I connect it back down, okay? Notice how they even kind of change color. So these are darker? They're darker because they're up here. They're not on my plane. See how there's nothing there? It's hollow. So you can see the sky through it. But anything that's down here, I can start deleting stuff, okay, and it's not gonna hurt my, this big shape here. It's not gonna hurt it, because it isn't part of it. It's not lined up with it. I've drawn a, a cylinder right through my building. Oh yeah, that's okay. You can do that. We can make a silo. Um, let's push pull line. There's a freehand drawing tool. Um, I don't use it much, but uh, it's next to the line tool. Do you see this little squiggly guy? You want to probably do that on a surface. Does that make sense? You want to throw down like a rectangle, almost like you would just use a piece of paper to draw on. That's what I would recommend. But you can draw any kind of shape you want, and then it'll do its best to try to make that into something usable. Anybody 
You guys are awful quiet. Anybody struggling back there? Everybody doing good? Anybody totally lost? Okay. Any? I'm not going to get any noises out of you guys, Emma. No sounds. Okay. I'm just going to keep trucking. I'm assuming you guys are not lost back there. Which is fine. I don't want you to be. But I, I don't want you to be. You know what I'm saying? All right. We're going to keep going then. All right, let's learn some new tools. What is the erase eraser for? Ah, it uh, it is a little redundant, but um, it's going to get your edges. So it's going to delete your edges, not your faces as much, but your edges. Um, it's essentially exactly the same as using the select tool and hitting delete. So it's a little redundant. Don't worry about that paint bucket tool. We're going to get to that. And then this other one is like share on oh component maker. I don't know anything about component maker. Seems neat. Um, I know how to make a component, but oh, yeah, that just makes a component. We may get to that. Components are like a group, but they're like a super group. They got some special features. How can you, um, like if you've deleted something, can you do a re reinstitute? Like instead of command, how, how do you redo a redo? Is there a redo command here? Can yeah. Redo right here under edit. Uh -huh. uh, if there is one, that's where it'll be. So like say I drew a line here and I undid it. Redo erase. Redo. Draw a line. It's Command Shift Z is a redo. Uh, Takes you a step forward in time. All the way up to the last thing that you did. Which of course is as far in the future as it can go. Um, let's go ahead and talk about grouping. Let's make a group of this house. Basically, grouping's easy. You just tell it what you want to be in the group, and hit a button, and voila, it groups it up for you. So it's not terribly difficult to make work. Um, what we want to do is make this house a group. So what we need to do is to select the whole house. Let's not select her. So check it out. Would this be good? No. Would this be good? Yes. Once you've got all your stuff selected, get that whole house selected. Let me give you a hint. Triple click. Triple click is fast. Just keep clicking until the whole thing's highlighted. Blue. Oh, you can't just surround it? You can, but you can also just click, 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 and then everything that's touching it. It's got to be connected. It's got to be touching it, or it won't help you. And then once you got that going on, you want to go <laughs> up to uh, Edit, or you can right-click on it, for those of you right-clickers out there. And then you do Make Group, or you can click Command-G, which is the hotkey. Then you'll see it's sort of got this box around it, you know? All right, so it is grouped. She is outside the group. If you want to edit a group, here's how you do it. You double-click on the group. Then you're inside the group. Now everything's separate again. Notice how I have this dotted line around it, which is around my box, which is showing me, hey, I'm inside this group now. Okay. Outside the group, if I click out into nowhere again, now with my first click on it, I'm hitting the group first. So how do you ungroup again? 
select a group, go to edit, and then go down to close group or component. Oh, that's great. Or explode, sorry. Explode is what you want to do. Explode. Um, it may not be under edit. It's under the right click option, though. Uh, I'm not sure where the... Explode, I've seen it in the right click. It. Yeah, I'm not sure where or it is. you can hit edit group above it. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's under edit, solid group, and then explode. Any questions on grouping? It can be very handy. I use them a lot. Components as well. Okay. We are ready to move on. Um, do you guys want to learn arcs? I mean, they're going to be fun. And I mean, hard. We get to rotate. That's all. I can't rotate stuff. You, can't, you just can't wait to rotate. Because that's where I'm stuck. Because if you drew a bunch of parts and you want to put them together and turn them together sure. and all that. Rotation's pain in this program. But, well, it's not pain. It's just... No, where to click and where to... Yeah. Well, the arc is a lot like that, so we'll, we'll start with that and then we'll do the rotation. So I'm just going to make an easy one. I'm going to come up from the top, look, at, look into my house from the top down, everybody. Everybody with me? Crickets, crickets. Uh, where, how'd you get the compass tool? So I'm going to do the first arc, okay. which is the, I don't know, there's the arc, the two-point arc, and the three-point arc. Um... Kind of shows you how it works there. Oh, I don't like this one at all. So this one would be like I would come over here. It's almost like backwards from what you would think, right? Um, oh, I already, I'm already upset. So I'll come out here, and then that's where I make my arc. I missed it. Not so good. So you are basically, your first click is this line here, part of the, the straight line of the arc, of the pie, of the piece of pie. Mm. I don't know, I find the arc tools to be somewhat confusing, but I, I use them. From time to time. Um, to me, that one seems sort of backwards from like what you would typically think you would be doing. Something to bear in mind um, when you're using any of the protractor tools. <sighs> I have to lean back a little bit. Sorry, guys, it's been a long day. Um, the protractor tools, it's very important what color your protractor is at any given time. It's going to be the color of an axis, so it'll be red, it'll be blue, or green. Those are all well and good. If it's black, that's not a problem, but it just means that it's going to be lining up with something else, arbitrary, so to speak. In this case, that's fine, that's the slope of my roof, but, you know, it's not always going to be like that. Can't always be easy. Uh, the other arcs are the ones that I use more often. I don't particularly use them much, but they're there. Um, this two-point arc, which is the second one here, I like to think of this one as sort of like a... I like this one the best, and I, I like to think of it as kind of like a bow and arrow. So your first one is one end of it. The next one is the other end. It's like the letter C. It's like the end of the C. And then you pull it. So it's almost by default going to be like a semicircle kind of shape, right? Uh, you can make twisted arcs and corkscrews and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's not super easy, but it can be done. Mm-hmm. This is where we're starting to get to sort of advanced-ish um, tools.
tools that the program can do. So yeah, that arc, it's kind of like a bridge, right? Like, just give you guys like a, a mega quick example here. Like I wanted an arc over that. Could take that one and I could kind of go, okay, we're going to start here and then we're going to go over here and like make a bridge, oh, an arc, an arch, whatever. Then I could do something even cooler, but I'm not going to show you guys how to do this tonight because I'm kidding. I, I will show you if you want, I guess. So it's this one. Come on! Sorry, I don't know why I can't get it to complete. Swear. Mm, that's super annoying. Worry about that later. And the last arc. Is this one here? And I don't even know how this one works. It's weird to me. Um, You like start that first point and then you, you do a third point. Actually, it's pretty cool, but I don't know. I don't know a ton about geometry or engineering, um, so I'm not exactly sure how you would apply these. I just don't know in my own um, my own background and experience using the program. But they are cool. Sometimes you can get away without having to make arcs, just to use the circle tool, but this one makes one that's definitely not a pure pie circle. So you can have some, um, I don't know, different, uh, I don't know what you'd call those, curves. Yeah. Different exponents in there. All right, so we've talked about push-pull tool. Let's talk about the move and the rotate tool. So everybody still got that house? Everybody still got that house grouped? Do do try to group it if you don't have it already grouped. And we're gonna move that house. The move tool is this one right here. It's kind of in the middle on the left. It's a four pointed red arrow. It's like a cross with red arrows on it. Does everybody see that tool? And it's pretty darn easy. Now I don't want you to click on these pluses because that's gonna bring up rotation. Don't click on the red pluses. Click anywhere but, okay? And you simply click and drag Okay, now typically when you're moving something, you're going to move it one axis at a time. You can do two. I wouldn't recommend it. You know, I would scoot it to the left however much you need and then scoot it, you know, forward or back however much you need, if that makes sense. But, you know, if you just got to be a rebel, you can do more than one. Doing three gets really crazy. Okay, I'm just going to warn you. Uh, try, try it. See what you think. Wouldn't recommend it though. Especially when you get up off the ground plane like this. I'm up in the sky, you know, do I really want to be? All right. How's everybody doing with the movement? Sounds great. Okay. Um, that's the move tool. Now, notice we're moving one grouped object here, right? Let me go inside and let me show you a totally different side of the move tool. Are you ready? So depending on what you have selected, what did we have selected before? Cricket, 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 cricket. 
What did we have selected? What did, well, when I was moving this house, what was selected before? Well, your move tool. Well, you grouped and then you had your move tool. Yeah, group. Group being the key, right? If I just move this by itself and then grouped, that's going to get crazy. Or how about just this, just this edge, just this one here? I think that's what I did before, something like that. Woo! Yeah, it get real crazy real quick. I mean, it's neat. I'm just saying, you may not want to be doing this. So moving, a lot of times you'll be doing it with a group, but not always. For example, if I select the right stuff, which is going to be kind of a pain, um, I want you to remember uh, also that, I don't think I've mentioned this, um, as you click on things to select them one by one, if you hold down the shift button, you'll add to your selection. And I think I can move this without, yeah. Okay, check it out. See how I'm moving this window? I go off the plane even, I can move it. Where it's not gonna wanna easily move is like out here, but I can even do that. Check that out. Me. I don't know, does some fun stuff, the move tool. But sometimes you don't wanna. And that's while it's grouped. Huh? I have not grouped it. I was just really careful about how I selected it, yeah. I had to get five sides there to do what I'm doing. Five sides, because it's actually popping out a little bit. So I got all sides of the cube but one, basically. Any questions? That's the move tool. Ready for the rotate tool? I know you are. Right, is it Mike? I know it's David. not. David, I'm sorry. I gotta remember your name because you're in here a lot. David wants to work on the rotate tool. The rotate tool's fun, it's a little difficult. So let's let's do this. Let's use the house again. Let's back out. Let's select the grouped house. It's group home, you know? And we're going to get the rotate tool which is right below the move tool. It's a curved arrow chasing each other. Actually, the rotate tool is not that bad. Okay, so your first click is your center. It's your fulcrum. It's the point where it's bending, the joint, whatever you want to call it. So that's your first click. So I will do, obviously you guys understand the color codes, right? So blue is what I want if I'm going to rotate the house you know, like how tilted it is to her. If I rotate another way, it's gonna be a messed up looking house that you don't wanna live in, because it ain't gonna be level. But this way, it's not. It just kinda of depends on how the uh, geography looks. I'm gonna start at this corner. I wanna make sure it's blue. A way to make sure it's blue is to hit the up and down arrow key. Click and let go is my first click. Everybody watching my screen? Mm hmm. Click and let go is the first click. Second click is where I'm grabbing it to rotate it from. Click and let go. And I'm rotating. And the final click and let go is where I get it where I want it. I'm done. Now let's make it a crazy looking house. It's going to be black this time because I've rotated it. I've tilted it. Go up here. Oh gosh, it is like, it is like a uh, Los Angeles post-earthquake, post-apocalypse house from, I don't know, there's my house now. <laughs> What's actually going on here? is I've got two overlapping shapes, okay, two overlapping objects, but because the house is grouped, it's not interacting with these. So I can actually move the house around without affecting this other rectangle that I put on there, on the ground plane. 
but I could if I wanted to. I don't think I will get to show you that because it's very advanced and confusing, but there is a way to get them to intersect. So I can literally slice all this stuff off the bottom if I wanted to. That's one of the more advanced tools that they do not give you with the free version. However, there's a workaround, so a few more steps. So it's doable. And kind of fun, actually. Okay. Um, I would not recommend rotating too far off of your axes because it's really hard to get it back on that track. If not impossible, except for, you know, going back steps in your history. Okay. You can get it back that way, but that's a lot of work. Are there any questions on that, on the move and the rotate? What do you guys think? Speaks volumes. Tell them. You guys are quiet. Most quiet bunch I've ever had. How do you force the... I'm going to say you don't want the blue. You want to... Uh -huh. I'm going to say I have two pieces and I'm laying there side by side. And I want to fold it up like like basically like the back of a chair. Yeah. So I want two rectangles flat. And then I want to rotate up. Right. Uh, that's a great question. Let me... All right. So basically I think what I'm hearing is that you got... Something like this. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what you want to do is when you got your um, rotate tool out, um, up, down, left, and right. Just hit the arrow keys. Arrows. Yeah. So you want, I want, yeah, it's pretty, try. it's pretty handy. Um, in fact, is that even listed on the inspector? I don't even remember the instructor. I don't know if it even tells you that you can, can lock them. Red, red. Yeah, arrow, arrow keys. Uh, well, it could be red or green, depends. Mine's actually underground here. For some reason, I started down below. I'm. It doesn't really matter. Well, it does. Here, I'll show you. What matters, I guess, in this situation is the color of the protractor. So if I hit the left arrow, it's green. I'll see what's be green. I do. And then I want to click there. In this case, I want it to be green, so I can do that. Well, oops. Sorry. You want the whole, um, I would want that selected. Then I would go to my rotate. Then I would hit left to get green. Then I would click first for the rotation point, click second where I'm gonna grab it and pull. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Also, um, when we were talking about putting in lengths and stuff, you can also put in degrees. If you absolutely needed 83.2133 degrees, you can put that down in here. Like, I'll show you. Check it out. I got it. See how it tilted a little bit there? See? Oh, shoot. Anyway. Yes, see that? I'll be watching a YouTube tutorial and then they'll lose me. And that's the stuff that gets me frustrated. I won't go any further because I'm like scratching my butt. Believe me, man, I understand. A watcher of many YouTube videos. Some are great. Some are really hard. So now that I got my house up on a corner like this, it's going to be a pain, and I mean royal pain, to try to get it back. And I'll never get it back. I'll never get it back. <laughs> well, that's the only way. So that's what I'm saying. If you guys want to go off track, yeah, I mean, it's fun. You can go off the trail, but it's going to be tough to get it back on. Like, that's close, but it ain't level, you know, and... I mean, that's close, but still, it's not perfect, but it's close. Close about as good as you're going to get. Okay. Um, rotation and moving is kind of tough.
but it can, it can be handy. I mean, it's good to know how to do it because you're going to want to move stuff around. Also, while we're on moving, um, does everyone still, everyone still has a house, right? <laughs> okay. Select your house. I'm assuming you got it grouped. I'm just going to go over this again because it's also really good to know. If you go to edit and copy, and then back to edit and paste, and then you got to, you know, it's going to be kind of hanging out, waiting to go in, and then you, you, you click it, it can align, see, it'll align, well not align, but it'll, it'll at least be the same plane, right? And then boom. Everybody got the copy paste together because it's, it's super handy. Like why would you ever draw the same thing two times? You don't have to. It's a digital world. Another cool tool. Did that work okay for everybody? I don't need to spend any more time on that, do I? Because you can you can paste and paste and paste and paste again. I mean, if you, and actually after that, if you want to paste one more time, you, you could. What you want to paste it specifically on? Ooh, hey, that brings me to something good. That brings me to something good. Let, let's do this. Let's. Um, I got a good segue for that. Um, but David, you, you reminded me of something very important. I'm going to talk about. Let's all make a circle on the ground, like like so, okay? Let's all push-pull it up so we have a cylinder. You with me here? Let's group it, and let's copy and paste it. Because I want to show you something. If these are cubes, I don't really care. We basically just need, like, blocks. You know, like the ones little kids play with, little wooden blocks? That's all we really need. And I will wait for the silence, which I know is the signal that you guys are ready. And when you move stuff inside here, I want you to go to the move tool, okay? Um, we're gonna move one on top of the other. You may wanna watch me first. It's very important where you click the first time when you're moving something, because that's the point you're gonna be connecting in the end. So if I wanna move this, and I want to move it this way and just set it over there. It doesn't matter really where I click it, but if I want to bring it in contact with this one, if I start here in the middle and I click here, look what's happening. No, I want this on top. Oh, but you're not going to get that, buddy, because you clicked in the middle. If I want this to sit up on top, just like a perfect pillar, like a Greek Colosseum, I need to click it down here at the bottom. Everybody watching? Click right here and put it right there, okay? Where you pick something up from is where you attach it. Does that make sense? You pick it up from the top, you're gonna to be touching it the top to something, not the bottom. So if you want it to, just, just kind of bear that in mind, it's not rocket science, but it is kind of a factor of the program. Does that make sense? That's why I like to, to show it and. It, it weirded me out for a minute, but you kind of just got to figure out how the program thinks, you know. It's got its own very geometry teacher based, you know. My background's art. I'm an artist. And so that's, that's kind of how I use it. So, in fact, I'll show you some stuff of mine in a minute. Um... But I can't right now. Not allowed. No, I'm kidding. I, I'm allowed. I just uh, I would have to switch users. So that's moving in a nutshell. Um, you can select them both and then move them. Um, let's also look at. So if I wanted to move this back down to the ground, I would want to click it on the bottom, and then I would want to line it up with. And it can be hard. It can be kind of hard. I would line it up there, and then I would move it over. I know it's it's. It seems like one or too many steps for what it is, but I don't know. We'd have to talk to the designers who made the program. I, I they got me on that one. You just kind of got to practice it and get used to it. I think. 
just the way they wanted to make the interface. Another thing I want you to notice is if I open up this group here and I blow it up here and explode it. Remember how we talked about how the circles weren't real? Well, neither are the cylinder curves. But, again, it's it's just as good, really. It, it isn't as scary as it seems. I know it's scary, but it freaked me out at first. Now, notice how it's showing us this real nice shading, right? Pretty great. You guys ever seen the, uh, like the, you know, do we have any artists in the class? Former artists? Prince? Formerly known as? You know these guys, right? It's an option in here, okay? But we don't have to see it that way. Um, here's what you can do. There's a window I want you to get out. Um, go to Window, and then down to Soften Edges. Click that, bring this little window out. Now go ahead and select something fully. That means triple click on it, at least. And then you, you'll see you can drag this. If you drag it all the way to the left, then you'll separate out the individual ones. If you want to, you may want to take them apart. Notice if I delete one, look what I did. You know, I, now it's like a, I don't know, part of a telescope or something. I can even do that. Ooh. Such fun. Make a gear. You can make a gear that way. It'd be cool, like a Richard gear. Okay. Um, so that there's that. It's pretty fun. Um, that's how you can soften the coplanar and the kind of get an edge thing going on. Okay. Can you slide your whole palette over? Uh. Over your whole, um, whole screen. Surface, whole surface over. You want to do this kind of thing? Yeah. Uh, so middle mouse button, press down, and shift is pan. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. In fact, you use that a lot. I actually keep, I'm, I'm using left hand mouse because my hand's been cramping really bad. But I just keep my pinky on that shift button most of the time. In fact, there's a lot of, if you're a hotkey fan, a lot of good ones inside um, the program. Uh, Spacebar is the select button. And you're going to use that so much, so often. Um, any other questions before I go on? I want to show you a very challenging tool next. And then from then on, it's pretty much just fun stuff. Um, we, we had a lot of good times. So bear with me real quick. I'm going to show you the follow me tool. Follow me tool is going to confuse you. You're, you're not going to do super great at it at first, but um, given some practice, you'll get a little bit better. Okay. Um, takes a little while. Does everybody have a cylinder still? Can everybody look at the top of their cylinder for me real fast? And let's go to the line tool, please, which of course is your pencil, if you recall. All right, what we're going to do with this line tool is we're going to get to the midpoint. That's the important thing. So I'm going to go click, and it should automatically snap to it. Then I need to change my angle a little bit, and I'm going to go straight up with that tool. And then I'm going to connect it. So essentially, I've made a sundial, right? Here's a little anecdote here for you while we're on it. Notice that the two different sides of your triangle, that's your sundial, are different colors. That's significant. You know why? It doesn't really matter to this program what color you make stuff. Honestly, the math of it doesn't care. I mean, what's the math for green? 
What number is blue? Right? It doesn't care. But something it cares a lot about is what is the inside and what is the outside. And that is what these colors are telling you. In a minute, we, we're going to go in here and we're going to color everything. You can make you can make everything really pretty and fun looking inside SketchUp itself. But deep down underneath, everything is either inside or outside. Big difference. Especially when you go to 3D print stuff. Because if everything's not contiguous when it comes to that inside outside stuff, it's terrible for your print. So basically right now, white is outside, gray is inside. Just bear that in mind. Okay, I'm sure you guys probably have some grays on the surface, don't you? Okay, that's that's kind of the reaction I expected. Um, so, does everybody have a triangle here? Um, what we're gonna do is use the follow me tool. You probably want to watch me first. Just watch, probably, probably. Okay, this is the follow me tool. It is right underneath the push-pull tool next to the rotate tool. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click one time on the shape I want to pull around, and then I'm going to tell it where I want it to pull. So let me try this again. Something went wrong here. Oh, come on now. Don't fail me now, please. You oh! I'm sorry, I know what it is, I think. I need to ungroup this. So, explode it. So if, you're, if your cylinder is grouped still, click on it, uh, right click, and then make sure you hit explode. I am sorry. And now I'm gonna do what I was trying to do for you guys. Whoop, I already messed up. Um, you click and let go, and then you sort of follow this line around to the beginning, and you get your cone. We're gonna make a cone. Let me let me do it one more time. So I click and let go here, and then um, before I click again, I want to make sure I move my mouse around that edge till it goes all the way to the back. In fact, it, it's kind of smart. Sometimes it'll automatically complete for you, and then all you gotta do is click. If you should be so lucky. I haven't heard any cursing yet, but I'm waiting. If you mess up, just Command Z and try again. It's a pain in the butt, but it's awesome when you get it to yeah, work. That's, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's only the beginning. You want so to see you click on it, mm -hmm. and then you draw around it? Yeah, you, you, so in this case, we're gonna go around this line here. Yeah, that's right. But you don't have to hold the button down. So I'll narrate exactly what my hand's doing, right? Here we go. Click and let go. Now I'm tracing that, and then click and let go. So it's, okay, let me try it yeah, if you hold the button down, it'll do something crazy. So I click in the middle of the triangle? Yeah, it really doesn't matter, just anywhere on the face. Okay, so I click it there. Yeah. How are you guys doing in the back? Any, any luck, no luck at all? Someone really strange. David, any luck? No, but I'm coming up with something different that's cool. Mm. Like I'm using the first pool, but it, didn't, it just won't follow like a, what you were doing. Yeah. Oh. It did. It took, it took a yeah, little can, bit to. We can keep practicing. It, it's a pain. I, I know. It's it's a hard tool. We can start with a brand new cylinder. I couldn't get it to go one direction, but I can get it to go the other. It's funky. I, I don't have all the answers, but I know it's it's funky. But it's cool. I'm going to show you something else it does too. It's it, you can also use it like this to make a sphere, kind of a rudimentary sphere. But I'll just demo. Kind of make it half and then half, I guess. Um, Ah. Told you this one was going to be a little tough. Like that. Ah, wow. Cool, right? Yeah, how did you make that so quickly? I'm just, just 
it's that good, work, man. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> no I, I, I've played with it a lot. Um, I got it this time. I just started with it. Now, SketchUp is awesome. There are other programs that allow you to make these kind of shapes so much easier. So just bear that in mind. SketchUp is very, like, straight line kind of program. Um, I mean, it'll do curves, but it doesn't love them. It doesn't love them. So if I did want to make, if I wanted to make this a uh, total sphere, though, we'll go ahead and complete this just for, for demo sake. I'll delete this. I don't need that hanging out. Bear in mind, uh, extra stuff floating around is not your friend in this program. It doesn't, doesn't hurt a thing if it's uh, just looking at it, drawing it. But when you go to print it, oh, you don't want no strays. So I'm going to copy this. Paste it. I'm going to flip it. Check this out. Right click, flip along. Uh, blue. Yep. All right. And then I'm going to grab a point, and then I just need to find that same said point down here. Now I got a disco ball. Not perfect, but it's, it's getting there. The Death Star. But like I was saying, there's other programs that model these kind of shapes better. And even so, when you get close, these are all little individuals, each each one. So I could you know do stuff like that. Uh, you can get more. Um, what I'm looking for. You you can you can create more subdivisions in that if you want, but that's getting into like extra tools and stuff that don't come with the program. But so so bear in mind, and, and of course I know you guys know this with any program that we work on here. It's we're only you're only seeing the tip of the iceberg. But in this two hours here in this class with me, you guys are learning all the basic tools. I'm not going to leave a single one out. But there's a ton where that came from. You know what I mean? Like there's. All kinds of good extra stuff. Something I kind of love about the program is, and, and it might be because it's a lot of it is freeware. Um, there is the free version. Um, there are tons and tons of extra stuff that you can add on here. A lot for free. Some you have to buy, but a lot of it for free. Okay. Um, let's just learn a couple more tools after this. Uh, the. Uh, Follow me. I want to show you one more thing that follow me does. Okay, bear with me. Everybody ready? Everybody ready? So just go out in the middle of nowhere. I don't care where, somewhere on your screen where you got some space and draw me, just draw me a circle on the ground. That's all I need here. Just draw me a circle on the ground. I can't believe they made a movie about Tommy Wiseau. Who is, who is that, that movie called The Room, which is like supposed to be one of the worst movies ever. He he's a weird character, but basically he had some money. He was in Hollywood. He wanted to be cool. He made a movie that he starred in, and it's like so terrible. And it became a cult classic. And they made a movie about it with James Franco. <laughs> but trust me, he's like a horrible actor. Like that's the joke is that it's that bad. You know. So we're gonna we're gonna go back to the line tool. And basically, here's what I want y'all to do. I want you to draw a straight line up and down, like that. Pretty simple, right? And then from there, draw draw some craziness. I mean, don't get too crazy, but you can you know, draw something like that. Try to work a few different angles in. And you have something like, like so. Actually, I'm not crazy about that on that one. I'd rather go up again. Okay. Kind of like a crankshaft maybe kind of shape something like that all right now that you got that going on you're gonna see the other really cool function of the push pull tool you ready you're gonna go to or sorry the follow me tool you're gonna go to the follow me tool again all right you wanna watch me in demo on this circle here I click and let go. 
Then all I really all I really have to do is uh, go to the whoop. I go up here and then I go over here and I gotta make each connection because it's not quite that smart. But as I trace that line all the way to the tip, ta-da! It's really good for making pipes. I, I don't see how you did that. All right, I'll start over. You got this, right? You got to have the it's ingredients like first. That, yeah. Well, it's got to be exactly. I mean, not exactly, but <laughs> what it, the the line is touching your circle, right? Yes. That's. I think that any. It, that may not even come right from the middle. Okay. Good. So you want to click and let go on the circle, then point it right at that line. Follow it all the way up, but oh, don't right. click. Don't don't. I'm not going to click again until I get to the very end. There. And now I'm clicking. Does that work for anybody? Yeah. It's neat. It kind of works like a lathe. I'll show you another way. I'll show you another way it works. Um, it, it's a cool way to get a lot of good shapes. So, actually, okay, rectangle on the ground. I didn't know you were making a pipe, so mine's a lot better. It's okay. This is, I, you know, I would think this is probably the most common way that this tool is used. is like this. Say so you want something with some design to it, like that. Delete some of it. You see, in SketchUp it's, it's really cool. You actually will use deleting things a lot to, to make things, you know. Counterintuitive, right? It's like some kind of secret the government has, right? But they, they can do it. So click right here. I go all the way around, and now I made like, ooh, it's inside out, but I made like the holy grail. Uh, cool thing is you can reverse the faces and you can fix everything, but pretty neat. So that's how you would make like crown molding or, well not, cr well yeah, whatever that stuff's called, you know what I mean? Like inside homes, around the, the corners, Baseboards, yeah. all that kind of thing. Um, Air rails. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Baseboards. All that stuff, yeah. It's like a lathe, but digital. So it's really fun. Um, so follow me tool would totally be the easy way to make this shape. Yeah, you could go in there and you could make you could make all this individually, like stacking a, a layer cake. But that's like a ton more work, so... You just kind of learn little things as you as you go by. This isn't something that I used a whole lot, but I learned about it from taking um, one of the Linda courses, which was taught by an architect. I'd never actually like, even though the, the program's meant for architecture, I hadn't really used it as such before. But it was very useful. He had a lot of cool info. In fact, we went by AutoCAD exported images and kind of put the house together in three view and then kind of built it from there and so literally you traced make some molding out of this without making it round. Mm. How would that translate? Like in a printed form or you know, I don't know if you can put it in some other software that makes it more smooth. I'd have to look into that. I don't know. Um Do you folks know what rendering is in, in, the, in the 3D modeling context? It's like what we've got here, it's like we've baked the cake, but we haven't put the icing on it yet. It's like we've got most of it. We've got the, we've got the structure here, but that's all we have. When you render something, that's kind of when you make it pretty. So when you see an architectural render, rendering, we're probably all familiar with that. When they're, you drive by a construction site and it looks like crap, there's just junk everywhere. And, but then they have that really nice picture. Oh, one day, once we get the funding, it's going to look like that. That's a rendering. SketchUp does not have anything to render for you built in. There's tons of stuff that you can get to add onto it. There's other programs that you can open it up in, but by itself, 
this is what SketchUp's going to look like all the time. It's not going to look pretty. Well, relatively. Now, on that note, um, there's a couple different ways that you can see stuff inside SketchUp, which I haven't talked about. So here's here's some fun for you. Um, go up to View. Okay. I'm not going to show you all of these. You can play around some on your own, um, preferably not during class. Don't want to get too far off the trail. Go up to View and then check Shadows. That's fun, right? Gives us a little more shading. Now, if you've got a slowish computer, you may want to turn these off because it's going to it's going to tax it. Do some rendering with paint. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I don't think you get like reflected light or anything like that, but but there's a lot of nice rendering engines. So ahead as you, you you went up to shadows. Huh? What, what's the menu? Uh, view and then just shadows. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't turn on the fog. Another one I want to show you is I wouldn't really even mess with edge style. You can play around, but go to face style and then hit X-ray. That's pretty fun, right? You can see where this would be handy, depending on what you're working on, right? Um, typical look is shaded with textures, with the x-ray off. Monochrome is what we were talking about. Um, I, I was talking about a minute ago with the white and the gray. So let's go beyond the white and the gray. Um, it, it'll be fun, I promise. Do you see that little um, paint bucket spilling the yellow paint up there? Click that for me. And that should open up a new window. All right, let's start with flat colors. So if you go to the uh, furthest left icon there, up there in the top left, everybody see that? Put your color wheel. So go in that color wheel, you can pick any number of colors, basically. Pick your color. You got the hue slider, you got the brightness saturation slider down here. And then with your little paint bucket icon, you can click on surfaces and you can color said surfaces. Why it's not letting me do it, I don't know. Because it should. What? So the shadow... Hmm. I'm having issues here. Yeah. Are you guys getting colors? Okay. Yeah. I don't know why I'm not. Um, I just can't... Oh, there it is. Shadows. Cool. So can you do uh, your perspective on where the sun is? You can! So, get you out. Uh, you have to get out. Hold, give me one second here. I'm trying to figure out why I can't get textures. If I can't get textures, oh, am I still in monochrome? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yes, shade of textures. There we go. Okay. Um, if you want to get out, um, well, that's actually cool. If you want to get out uh, and play with the shadow and the, the angle, it's window shadows as you may have guessed. So you want to pop that one out. This is one that we really get out for rendering purposes. Okay, and then you want to, to change that, right? You can see them on faces or and on the ground. Uh, it's time of day. Yep, you got time of day, uh, got date. Totally, totally cool. It is, but this is, this is as close to rendering as you'll get. You can do a ton more in other applications. You can add more lights, you can add all kinds of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't do a lot of heavy rendering in here. Um, textures are fun. All right, I want to show you something here. Textures are basically a photo, right? So uh, it, it, it can be a repeating... Textures are going to be the brick over here, okay?
So it can uh, be a flat color like that. Did everybody find the brick okay? Yeah? If you look under there, there's a menu, right? And you can go down to, uh, I want you to go to, it's, it's window, windows, glass and mirrors. There you go. Some of them are transparent, like that. And you can set the transparency of any color, really. There's an opacity slider there in the middle. So if I wanted a little more opaque, I could do that. And then, so let's see through. You can save them to this grid just by clicking and dragging on them. I mean, there's a lot of fun stuff you could do. Um, I don't think we're going to have time to actually look at how to do this, but you can make your own texture. All you need is to do is drop a photo in there, and you can create your own texture with it. Okay? In fact, when we go to the 3D warehouse in a minute, which you guys are going to go to as well, check it out. Everybody see this? These kind of things, um, oftentimes, the, especially with buildings, they will literally use a picture of the building stitched onto the model, okay? Like that is probably a good example. I, hmm, those might all be individual windows. It's hard to tell. Hmm. No, it's all picture. See, see how they're not really the arches aren't really there. They didn't, they didn't fully sculpt it. Although they did make these nice little, whatever, bed knobs. I don't know what those things are. Sorry, I, I'm not an architect. Yeah, call like I see it, man. Um, let me see. I need to, I need to teach you guys some other stuff before we go to the 3D warehouse. Okay. I'm going to show you every tool in the original toolbox. Uh, scale tool. We're going to go through these kind of fast. Scale tool is right here. Um, under the rotate tool, I've already got this grouped, so it automatically grabbed everything. If you drag from the corner, you will scale up or down, and you won't change perspective. If you start grabbing it anywhere else, you're going to get surface mirror stuff, which is fine. You may want that. You may not, right? You know, if you just want to like lengthen the house, I don't know. Weird stuff will start to happen. So I, I generally just scale up from the corner. Uh, here's another fun thing. Check it out. Um, I got my original house here. If I want to make this exactly twice as big, watch down in the lower right corner. When I get to 2.0, I double it. So that's handy. You can see exactly where it is. Also, you can turn stuff inside itself to get like a negative one. And when you do that, you can get mirror. Um, mirror, again, um, I'm not going to go through it tonight. But if you're interested, just Google it on YouTube. Basically, any of these things that we were looking at that people have made, the buildings, cars, stuff like that, you don't have to do both sides. You do one side and kind of have it mirror. And it'll automatically replicated on the other side but flipped. Handy. Um, so you don't have to do it all the hard way. Um, okay, offset tool. Very handy tool. Um, so the offset tool, any face you've got, the offset tool basically will put like a concentric shape in there. Like that. All right. Or if you go outside, it's a frame around it. Okay? That's this tool right here, offset tool. It's handy. I like it. Great for window panes and stuff, you know, framing, things like that. Um well, that's a modern looking house. Let's see. Move all my pieces on my board here. The measurement tools, which we kind of hinted at earlier, I'm going to go over them again. A tape measure is going to go from point to point and tell you how big it is down in the lower right corner. 
And I mean, they make that a small little area, don't they? They're really not trying to make it easy. Uh, that's pretty cool. It is. Yeah, and then the dimension tool, same exact deal, but it it puts them out there. Whoops. And you can actually select the dimensions. Notice how they're actually something I can select. Can't move it really, but I can select it. I can delete it. I don't have to delete the actual piece. Okay? That's this one right here, the dimension stool. Uh, protractor, same deal as the uh, tape measure, except it's going to measure angle. It's going to be angle. And then um, that one is, so I can hardly ever use these personally. Text. This is a note. Literally, if you want to leave a note, like, don't step right there. And then I can say, what the? And now it's like part of, now it's part of my drawing. It's like a label. It's pretty cool, right? That's this one with the A1 next to it. Access tool, oh, I wouldn't mess with that. Just take my word for it, I wouldn't mess with it. Um, the 3D text tool though is pretty cool, especially for printing. If you want to print like your logo or something, that could be cool. So what you do is when you click it, okay, um, you go ahead and enter the text. So I'm just gonna call this just. You've got several fonts to pick from. Um, so I'm going to extrude it like two feet, maybe place. You're going to want to place it on a surface. See how it's pretty small right now. So I'll put it there. Yeah, it's pretty small now, but remember that scale tool. Remember that guy. And I can. And it does group it. So I can do this with the push pull tool. Is this not grouped? Now I'm inside the group. I feel like I'm going way too fast. I'm going too fast, aren't I? No? So have you guys seen these that I made? Uh, Basically, yeah, I mean, I, I traced it, but same concept as these letters. In fact, and David, you might like this. Anything in vector, there is a really quick process, just a couple clicks. It will map it out into shapes that you can then extrude into, like raised text or logo or whatever. So a little sailboat, I just draw a flat sailboat. Yeah, but it'd still be like a flat shape. It's not going to be... Does that make sense? It'll look like... Yeah, I mean, it'll look... It's not going to do the full 3D for you. Right? Like any kind of shape that you've got. So if it is a sailboat... I know this is really bad, but say that's your sailboat... It'll do that. You can get that really fast. It's not going to be any more 3D than that. So you're saying we mean the vector that ends up? Like an Illustrator file? So you hit a few buttons and it does it for you instead of having to literally trace it all again. So you just import it? Mm -hmm. it? Yep, there's an import process. Um, I have it on my my version. What I want you guys to do now though, like let's look at just a couple last tools down here. And actually there are these very last ones. Oh, it's like your previous view. That's cool. Um, do you see the little person? That is basically, it's going to plant the camera wherever you click. It's kind of cool. It's more uh, for review than actually constructing it, but a lot of people will go in here and make really like homemade animations. 
so they will throw the viewer. That's where the feet are. And I'm guessing it's about six feet, something like that, average human height. The height of humanity. Then the feet here is like a video game. <laughs> and wherever you push it, wherever you point it, you're going to drive around. Yeah. Again, architects, walkthroughs. You can do this inside houses. Interior designers love this app. I mean, a lot of different reasons you might want to learn SketchUp beside the fact that it's like really fun and free. And pretty powerful for being free. The eyeball, that is literally swiveling the camera around. Okay. It's not just uh, looking. I mean, it is literally looking around. It's not orbiting. Um, and we're not going to worry about section planes. That's very architectural. When I, when I clicked on that one, somehow I got that eyeball. It took me off and it never happened later. Can't get back now, to if that happens to you, are you ready? Yeah. Uh, go to window, or sorry, camera. Standard views, and then just pick from one of those, and that should get you back on course. Should. Because you can, I mean, you can get way out there, I'm telling you. Okay, here's what I want everyone to do. Um, do this now, do this in your spare time. Notice how we didn't ever really go up here. I mean, I, I don't use that one much, I use these. Um, okay, go to File. And then I want you to go down to 3D Warehouse. And then go to Get Models. You gotta have the internet but it'll open up a spare window here, okay? Now, you guys should use the hell out of this, please, okay? If you're working on a house, you need a couch, don't waste, you know, put your time into what's important. You don't have to spend time modeling a couch. There's thousands of them on here. You want a car in the garage? Get you a car. You know, and here's my favorite thing about it. I'm just gonna walk you through it. Let's say I find one that I really like. Oh yeah, bushes, trees, you name it. Kitchen, I don't care. All kinds of stuff up here. Let's say I like these Easter Island guys. I click download, I click yes, I click okay. And then I got them inside my model, right there. There they are. And a fun thing about these is you can reverse engineer them by exploding them and you can kind of see how other people have worked and how other people model stuff. So the C, that's half and half. They only had to make half. It's mirrored. And basically to mirror something, um, I'm not going to go through all the trouble of showing it, but essentially you have to have two components one flipped inside out essentially and just stick it upright to the next one and then it'll take over from there and it'll start mirroring it for you. I'm trying to think if I've left anything out. I don't think I have. But yeah, the 3D warehouse is super fun. I learned a ton from it. I, I think you guys could too. Um, there's more there's more that the program does, but that's a good good chunk of it yeah. There's also extension warehouse so if you find you If you if you really feel like you need something 
Um, like, I don't know, some kind of process. You feel like you have to take too many steps to do it or, or something like that. Um, Google it. Someone might have written their own little program to kind of give you exactly what you need. Maybe not, but you'd be surprised. I found a lot of your books. Um, and most of them have been free. So that's kind of an advantage of it being kind of a freebie app. Um, that's basically all I've got for you guys, unless you've got some questions uh, for me. There's also a survey you all can take. Um, oh, shoot, I might have to print some more, I guess. Or staple some more, at least. Any questions? Okay. There is a survey. This, I really need to update this uh, handout. All of these. Would you guys be okay to share one? Or do you want me to print you out another? No. One's good. Um, does anyone remember the, uh, sorry, I, I did this to myself, but I'm like running on my. I have one already. Ah. One's all we need. Okay. I'm running on my like last few dribbles of gas here. <laughs> okay, so the survey is down here. There's this little globe here. I should click that. And then, what? I'm sorry, not the globe. My bad. Don't click the globe. Click next to the globe with the Safari icon. And this is the password. Um, Safari icon. Yeah, it looks just like a page with like a, it's this guy right here, down the lower right oh, okay. corner. Gotcha. And then the password is Lexington1. Lexington and the number one, no spaces. Capital L, Lexington1, capital L. And, if you want to hang out for just a second, I'll show you some stuff that I've made. If y'all want to see. Well, I don't even get to Lexington 1 and I don't, it says password, but. It's weird, you gotta click in there with your mouse. It's like, I know it's deceiving, it's, it's kind of odd. No? Okay, give me just one second. 